Okay, well, um, you know, yesterday we went and uh, went to the memorial with, uh, for uh, Nick and uh, came back and today we got to work on New Mexico State. Our players are off today and uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll start our practices in preparation for them. But uh, I think it's really important that, uh, um, you know, we find a way to just get refocused on this game and concentrate on, uh, you know, getting better, improving some of the things that we need to improve upon, some of the mistakes that we made on Saturday. There's a lot of area for improvement on this football team, and we need to recognize that, and I think we do. You know, I've said it all along, our, our aim is not to just be an average football team. You know, we've got a vision here of what we want to be, and uh, so we've got to work hard for that every day, and that's our intent. So we're excited about the chance to go out and play again Saturday night against New Mexico State. Uh, it's not a team that I'm very familiar with. Spending some time this morning watching them on film, uh, watching them against against Texas and UTEP. They play good competition, and they're a competitive team, and it'll be fun to go out and, and, uh, and compete against them Saturday night. So. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I think about it. I don't worry about it because I think we've got uh, a, a coaching staff that's capable of, and I think it's our responsibility as a coaching staff, uh, to push these kids out of any hangover effect that there might be. And I think it's human nature when you come off something as emotional as we came off of last week, which was obviously the, the death of Nick and dealing with those emotions trying to balance that with preparing for Nebraska and then going into Nebraska and getting a big win for this team for this year. And then uh, yesterday, the service, you know, which was very emotional for a, a lot of our kids. And then to come back and play a game, you know, you could certainly understand where there might be a hangover, but we can't let that happen. Not if we're going to be the kind of team that we want to be. So, uh, you know, our goal is always, you know, as stated in, you know, one of our covenants is, you know, we, we uh, prepare for our opponents, but we play against the UCLA football standard. So that's, I think, really what we have to get back to is just the fundamentals of the mental, the mental part of it and the actual football part of it, which is, hey, it doesn't matter who we're playing. There's a certain way we're trying to play, and that's how we're going to approach it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, they uh, they handled it for young adults, many who have not been through that type of situation. And some of them, unfortunately, have. Um, I thought they handled it very, very well. And then, Jim, to go into that environment and get down like we did and have the maturity and the mental toughness to gather themselves back and go out and play the way they did in the second half and get that win, I think, yeah, I was very proud of them. You know, they showed me a lot. Showed me a lot of maturity, a lot of mental toughness, a lot of care, a lot of love. Um, it was pretty special. You always talk about uh, sports being the way that you teach us life lessons. What are the life lessons that you learned in playing in the last four instances? Well, I think, a co I think there's a number of things. Um, I think it started with the fact that uh, one thing that I talked about with them on Sunday night, when we had the team meeting, you know, after we all learned of Nick's passing, um, was I think that they all have to understand that they are, as a team, they're responsible for each other's dreams and helping each other reach their dreams. And one of Nick's dreams was to play football at UCLA and not just be on the team, but play. And he was working towards that. And because of the fact that our starters were able to go out against Nevada and build a lead, we were able to get some, some guys in the game that if the game was tighter, we may not have been able to get in the game. One of those was Nick Pasquale. So he got to go out and play a play on the Rose Bowl turf in front of his family in a real game and live out a dream. And I wanted them to understand that 
that's a life lesson, that they're not just responsible for themselves, but they're responsible for those that are around them. And, and, and then just that if they, if they stay together and they stay strong and, uh, and they show some empathy for each other, that great things can happen. And, uh, you know, I just want them to continue to learn those things. But there's, there's going to be a lot of lessons along the way. There's going to be a lot of things we take out of this. And the other thing, you know, I don't want to just continue to orate. I made some statements this week about, or last week, that it wasn't about winning or losing. And I don't want anyone to misconstrue. Our goal was absolutely 100% to go win the football game. That's always our goal, is to go win the football game. But we didn't want to have, or I didn't want our team to have an attitude of, we're going to win the game for Nick. We're going to win the football game because that's what we're trying to do is win the football game. But I wanted them to play in a way that reflected their feelings toward Nick. And I didn't want that to be about the wins or the losses because if it was a situation where we were unfortunate enough to not come away with a win, um, I didn't want them to feel like they let anybody down. And so that's, that's what I meant by that when I said that. I never really explained that. Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I, I'm not, I didn't look at it quite like that. It was all there, but I felt like that there was really two most important things to me were, number one, Nick's family. That is, without a doubt, the most important thing here, Nick's family. And then number two is the young men that, that I'm responsible for coaching. You know, I come way behind all of that, and I just deal with it the way I deal with it, and, you know, but... uh I just kind of do what I do. I don't know. Just <laughs> I was worried about his family. I was worried about our players. The last guy I was worried about is me. I'm, I'm fine. I'm a old guy. Well, Jake's one of our captains, which says a lot, considering he's a redshirt sophomore. And I think that just tells you what our players feel about him. He's a tough kid, you know. He doesn't say a lot, and usually when he does, you know, he's yelling at somebody. <laughs> I say that in jest, but uh, I think that he is kind of uh, the ringleader there, and he does kind of set the identity for our offensive line. Tough, passionate, serious, you know. Um, he has a little bit of a nasty streak in him, and that's how we would like to play up front. When I say nasty streak, I don't mean cheap shot at all. I mean, he just plays the game with the type of aggression that you're supposed to play with. Uh, and I, I see that rubbing off on guys. And I think Alex Redman, you know, Alex was one of the players of the game on offense this past week, you know, starter as a true freshman at Nebraska against a pretty good defensive line. He had a heck of a football game. You know, he's got a little bit of that Jake in him. Uh, X has got a little of that. You know, we got to get our tackles playing a little bit more consistent. But Jake's Jake's definitely the leader up there. We want to play penalty free. Uh, we want to stay on schedule, which means it's always first and ten or less. Um, you know, we want to execute at a high level of efficiency. You know, we don't want to be an offense where ten guys are doing the right thing and one guy's not executing the way he's supposed to, and it it slows us down. You know, we want to be a well-tuned machine. You know, it's a cliche, but that's how we want to roll. You know, where we just feel like no matter what we're calling, we're going to make it work, and we're creeping closer to that. You know, the thing you can never forget is that there's a team on the other side of the. Uh, the ball that has the same goals as you do, you know, and they've got scholarships that they're giving away, and they've got athletes with a lot of pride and a lot of heart, and they've got coaches that, you know, know what they're doing. So it's never going to be easy. I mean, these games are hard. I mean, it's hard to win a football game, you know, at any level. I was looking at, I had Xavier Sufilo up in my office just a while ago, and we were looking at the NFL, the NFL stats, because, you know, X at some point in his career, he's going to play in the NFL, and I said, X, do you realize how hard it is in the NFL? There's 32 teams in the NFL. They've played uh, each. Well, not everyone's played two yet. I think they've had a bye. There's only eight teams that are 2-0 and after two weeks. There's 15 that are 1-1, one and, one, and there's seven 
that are uh, going to. Yeah, you know, football is hard. You just don't walk in and blow everybody out or score on every play. But we just want to be efficient. You know, we don't want to make mistakes. We don't want to hurt ourselves. They're, no, we're not. The Oregon's ranked number two in the country. They put up 60 points a game. They played in the BCS championship game. Look, we're just little old UCLA trying to get better every week. The drive for a touchdown um, was was a turning point, and then I think the exclamation, exclamation point before we went in at halftime was our ability to go three and out, get them off the field, return the punt, uh, get into you know long field goal range and have a shot at it. And, uh, and then we went in knowing that we could stop them and that we could move the ball. And uh, everybody relaxed at that point. You know, and we just became a little bit more like we typically are. I told them at halftime. The only thing I said to him really was, it's really good to see <laughs> see you guys finally, you know, wherever you've been. So, and they just went out and balled, just played. They had fun. You know, they, they were so tense. They were so afraid to make a mistake. They wanted to make things happen so badly, you know, and you could just see it on their faces. And I think that they had to realize that, you know, the reason they play football is because they love football and they're passionate about it, not necessarily playing it for somebody maybe to honor somebody. And they realized that, and they just calmed down, and they just started to have fun again. They smiled, you know? I mean, they were freaking having fun. It was good to see them smile. You're supposed to smile when you play ball if you're winning. Did it uh, validate a lot of the offseason that there was still going to be a pretty young team out there? I don't know. We'll see this week. <laughs> I don't want to say that it did, and then we'll go out and, you know. If we continue to do that, if we can continue to cut back on penalties, yes. But you still have to say, hey, those three, that's too many. You know, why'd they happen? You know, was it technique? Were our eyes bad? Were we not focused in enough? But we're continuing to emphasize it. It's not like we all just went, whew, we got that licked. Because if you think that, then it comes back to get you. Here's what happened on that is uh, the time they lined up the punt uh, right previous to that. Coach Olbrook looked over and, and he saw their, first of all, he saw their punter, or their, their I'm sorry, their personal protector look to the sideline. And as, as he looked, Jeff looked, and the special teams coach was like, goes, like that, like, no. So we knew that they had a fake. I mean, other, what else would we be telling him? So the next time we went out, we went out in a, basically a punt safe defense. So we were prepared to stop that. Yeah, and it should be less than that if he'd throw the ball away. And he'll be the first to tell. I don't know if you guys talked to him and did you ask him that question? I don't know. Y you know, he, he, you know, there was a couple of those sacks where uh, I felt like he should have thrown it away. You know, get rid of the, I was yelling at him, get rid of the ball. Um, but he's making progress in that area. But yeah, our offensive line is doing a much better job in protection. They're more confident. They understand the scheme. They understand the man they're blocking for better and how he reacts behind them. I think those are all important things. Yeah, he's had two outstanding games. I mean, he really has. You know, he uh, he's he's a tremendous athlete. He's in great physical condition. He never gets tired. I mean, he hardly even breaks a sweat in a game. He's got speed, he's got quickness, he's got strength, he's got explosiveness. He's extremely bright. I mean, he understands football. Uh, this kid is special. I mean, he's special, special. And it's going to be really fun to watch him over the next four years because he's going to make plays all over the field, not just on defense. Eventually, he'll play some offense, too. He's very intelligent. Yeah, he really studies the game. Um, he's got a mind for football. You know, he was very well coached in high school. Butch Koncharoff up at Bellevue High, you know, one of the top programs in the country, uh, coached him. Um, 
and uh, he takes it very seriously. He studies extra. He comes in early. He has questions, you know. And then it just kind of there's some guys that kind of comes natural for, and he seems to be one of those guys. So we just got to make sure we keep pushing him. You know, we can't let him get the big head, but he's not prone to that. He's not that type of guy. He's very grounded. His mom, you know, I've known Miles since he was 12. You know, the first time I saw him, he was a little boy, you know. So I've always kind of seen something in him that was special, and it's really fun to watch it, everybody else recognize it. Probably. Probably bothers him that Keenan Graham is leading the nation in sacks, you know, with – because uh, they do it, I think, average per game. So Keenan's at one and a half a game, and Anthony's at, <laughs> at zero. But I know Anthony got the Lot Impact Award, and he got another award this week, some other player of the game award. Um, I think Anthony's pretty selfless, and the fact that we're 2-0 and, and, and you know, just had a big win is more important to him than anything. But I'm sure deep down in there somewhere he's like, hey, I need to get some sacks. And not because he needs to get the sacks, because he wants to have an impact on the game. Yeah, I'm a disappointed we only have four sacks, to be quite honest with you, but I'm excited about Keenan. You know, that's not a guy that any, well, Keenan and, and Brandon, those are our two sackers, you know. Brandon Tulia Pupu, he came off the, <laughs> or no, it was Lee, it was Lee, Lee Epinesa. He, right after he got his sack, you know, I've always, I always tease him in team meetings that he's never gotten a sack since he's been here, I don't think. And so, he, you know, coach, you can't tease me anymore about not having a sack, you know, and he's smiling and he's happy. But, uh, Anthony will get his. He'll get him. You know, the one thing we don't want him to do is to start to press. Just do what he's supposed to do, and, and they'll come. And, you know, when you get the middle pressure out of guys like Lee, you get middle pressure out of Keenan Graham, then all of a sudden they say, oh, okay, we better pay attention a little bit to the inside, and then that will open some things up for Anthony. And for, for uh, on the other side, you know, Cassius has been playing a little bit outside. He's been playing inside. And then Deion Hollins, who's really going to be a great player. It's tenacity. You know, those kind of been effort sacks. At least the one on Saturday was an effort sack. I think people think he's undersized. And maybe he is a little bit short, but he's got a great build on him, and he plays with tremendous leverage. He's got a lot of lower body power. Um, you know, we play him in nickel down inside, you know, over a guard, and often he gets double teamed, and he's able to hold the point. And that's been impressive to me. He's he's a powerful guy with, with with strong hands and like I said, good lower body strength. So. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if he'd be this good inside on third down as he's been. I thought the quickness stuff he certainly had, but the power, you know, against some bigger guards, that's been a little bit of a surprise, you know, pleasant surprise. I mean, he's a good. We always knew he's a good football player. We've always respected his ability to play football, but. You know, putting a guy like that down inside on third down, he's not the typical body type for that position, and yet he makes it happen. Does a good job. Yeah, I, I saw that, and I think that's great. I think it's great for our conference. I think it shows that uh, people are finally, you know, I don't know, I shouldn't say finally, people are recognizing that there's some real quality football being played in the Pac-12. You know, you talk about Oregon and Stanford, and, and I think it's us and Washington and Arizona State, and then who's the fifth? Is it Arizona? Is that? So, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's good football being played out this way. And uh, we've got to keep doing it. You know, we've got to keep doing it. The other team's got to keep doing it. And we get against each other. We'll battle each other. But we, I think, you know, ultimately, you know, everybody in this conference kind of pulls for each other when we're playing out of conference. You know, I know I do, you know, because I respect this conference. I've been in this conference since I was a little boy, basically. You know, my dad coached here, coached at Washington, coached at Colorado. You know, I played at Washington. So I like this conference. I'm proud of it. By the way, Oregon, uh, you were talking about Oregon. Oregon was so classy. They sent a, uh, their team autographed a big poster and sent it down for Nick, which was really great. USC had a moment of silence. Cows reached out, you know. A lot of classy, classy things going on. 
Maybe nothing more impressive than what Nebraska did, though. You know, they have that tradition there of releasing the red balloons after their first touchdown. And when they, after the moment of silence, when they released the, uh, the blue and the yellow balloons, that was pretty special. Plus, you know, hour and a half before kickoff, their student section was packed, packed with people in black shirts. We come out on the field for pregame and they're cheering for us. You know, we leave the field afterwards and they're cheering for us. It was pretty amazing. And I'll tell you what was really cool is the stickers that they put on their helmets. Because remember, they were wearing a different helmet, okay? And so they had the, the black that turned into red. And so their theme for the day was black, red, and white. And it would have been really easy for them to put stickers on the back of their helmet that were black, because that would have matched. But I thought what was really a cool gesture was the fact that their stickers were blue. You know, I thought that was pretty neat. Something silly, something small maybe, but pretty, pretty damn classy of them. Okay, thank you.